This is the final word, England, Australia, T20 Daily. And, well, if you are a fan of T20 bilateral cricket, this is the place for you. Jeff Lemon and Matt Roller at the beautiful Sophia Gardens. The Sophia Loren Gardens, I like to call them, because they're in fact so attractive. England and Australia, they play tonight next to the River Taff. The show's brought to you by Westfield, London, Westfield, Stratford City. And you, Matthew Roller of the Parish of ESPN Crick Info, you're going to tell me, Jeff Lemon, about the game in the space of 30 seconds. It looks very briefly like it's going to be a rinse and repeat. Well, actually, pretty much for the whole of the first innings, it looks like rinse and repeat. They get 193, uh, having made a fast start and been dragged back, which we saw on Wednesday night. Uh, and it looks like England are not going to quite get there. They're 79 for three in the ninth over when Livingston and Bethel come together. Uh, Livingston sort of playing for his international future. Bethel, the young precocious talent, they put on, I think, 90 for the fifth wicket and 47 balls. England do their best to fuck it up right at the end. Matt Shaw somehow burgles a fifer, uh, but England get home with three wickets and one over to spare to make it one all. It was exactly 90 and 47 balls. That is what they put on. The, the key partnership of the game, uh, it, it started off as you would expect. Travis Head, Matt Short, same thing they did down at the other joint, 50 and four overs. Uh, the partnership ends after 4.2 when Bryden Cass comes on. And this was it was a significant night for him. So maybe we'll, we'll start with inclusions. Bryden Cass comes in, Archer is out. Yep. Uh, Cooper Connolly comes in for Australia. Hooray. Jake Fraser McGurk comes in for Australia. Aaron Hardy comes in for Australia. The three sort of young up and coming kind of next gen talents who we were expecting to see in this series, but may not have seen in this series if Mitchell Marsh had not become mysteriously ill in between around lunchtime today and tonight. Was he really ill? I don't know. Maybe he caught a cold the other night because it was freezing. Whatever the case, Fraser McGurk bats three, where normally he would open. They don't disrupt the head and short situation. Fraser McGurk, 50 on the button, which felt really significant for him. And Aaron Hardy, who uh, came in and clobbered some runs at the end and bowled a really good first over. So Connolly didn't get to do much. Bowled a couple overs, got whacked. A couple of ticks for those newer players, but... It's interesting how this is going, where suddenly the you know, Matt Short is, is making every post a winner so far with the opportunities he's had opening. All he needs to do is hang around with Travis Head. But again, like in the last game, Matt Short's the one who made the early running. He hits the first couple of sixes. He throws Reese Topley off by bombing a big one over deep backward square leg, second or third ball yeah. of the game. Uh, hits another one later in the over. Topley goes for 26 of his first two. And Head gets into them after that, after a few scratchy balls at the start, as seems to be his style. Yeah, and I think um, it, it is worth dwelling on those changes that we you've mentioned there. Um, I think there would there would definitely have been people rocking up tonight buying their program with Joffrey Archer's face plastered over the front of it, thinking, "Why is this guy not playing? Why can he not b play three T Twenties in or two T Twenties in three days, let alone three and five? Um, I, and you can sort of understand that from the ECB's point of view, this guy's been injured for so long. This isn't really an important series. He's got ODIs to follow. Um, but it is also a disappointment and there's the wider context of it being T20 finals day on Saturday where Archer's unavailable for Sussex because of this series and mm. you can understand why people would be disappointed about it. But Bryden Kazu comes in, uh, looked really good actually I thought. He, he sort of, he, he's got a horrible set of stats in, in pro cricket but um, in terms of the eye test he's, he's brilliant. He, he, he topped 91, 92 mile an hour I think today, uh, got a wicket with a second ball, head slapping to cover, um, extra pace probably did for him I think. Mm. Um, and he, he looked really good, took two for 26. Um, the, uh, the interesting bit, I suppose, for Australia, they obviously were a bit weaker today, and you could tell that, you know, even at half time, you thought England were more likely to chase this one down than the last one simply because the attack wasn't, wasn't there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the rooster crowed, didn't he? Uh, Fraser McGurk at number three got 16 runs in three innings in Scotland. Ponting was on Sky commentary saying he'd been chatting to him after that and making sure he was trading right, basically taking credit for what was happening as it was happening, uh, as every good coaching mentor and commentator would. Mate, he got 50 odd, now he's out. <laughs> um, and yeah, he, I thought he played really well, didn't he? I think we're, we're so used to seeing Fraser McGurk. He's obviously such a dominant leg side player. Uh, it was nice to see a couple of shots through the offside as well. He did crack a few through sort of wide mid-off extra cover region, didn't he? Yeah, drilled a couple along the ground, splitting the fielders that were nice. Got a bit lucky early, dragged one over mid-off, then one over mid-on. Um, but played with confidence, which seemed important. Um, Australia fall away through the middle with Stoinis and David making low scores again. 
So, you know, things weren't going so well for them there. It was Inglis holding it together as he did in Southampton. He makes 42 of 26. Short got bowled by Rashid for 28. Um, and then Green comes in at the end, takes a little while to, to get moving, but Hardy doesn't really. I mean, well, Hardy drives a few singles his first few balls and then whacks a four and a six and a couple of fours in the, was it the second last over and gets motoring there and then, you know, Green whacks a big six over the leg side. So 193, historically, you know, teams go about eight and over here, yep. which meant that, you know, 160 sort of par, really, if you're looking at it that way. And then England, like you said, looked like they'd be in trouble again. Will Jack's sort of out of sorts. Um, Cox gets an absolute beauty from from Abbott. So, so okay, so Abbott comes on. His first ball is plonked to, to what, second ball, deep back with square leg and caught. You know, not the greatest of bowlers week. It's the second one. Pitches, moves about six inches laterally, takes that leg stump while Cox is trying to play with a straight bat. And it's easy to, I'm sure people will look at the replay and say, oh, I just missed the ball, didn't he? But yeah, well, a lot of people would have missed that ball, especially trying to attack it. So Abbott's got two in his first over. Um, Salt's going along at about two runs a ball, as he tends to do, but he gets up to 39, was it? And then, and then gets out. And you're like, well, here's the point where England will slide away. Livingston will end up holding out somewhere. Um, they've got Jamie Overton doing the specialist bat at seven thing again. It's not going to work out. But and, and Bethel, who made two the other night, backing away, got bold and, and looked. It didn't look like he had a read on what he needed to do at that level, whereas tonight he took a little bit longer, got himself in, and then there's this turning point where A, Stoinis comes on and Livingston loots him, a couple of big sixes and a four, and then Zampa the next over, uh, where Bethel takes him down, three fours and a six, and when... When teams are taking down Adam Zampa, they're usually taking down Australia. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that felt, even though it ended up not being because it all got a bit weird at the end and a bit hallucinogenic, and am I really here? Is Matt Shaw really taking a fifer? Um, that, those two overs really felt like the difference. I think uh, there, there was a period of 10 balls where England scored, I think, 36 or 38 off Stoinis and Zampa, uh, and that really felt like the game was broken open there. And I, to be honest, you've got to say fair play to Liam Livingston. When, when I saw that he'd been promoted to number four originally, I almost thought... Given he'd been dropped from the ODI squad as well, given the sort of lack of form he's had, the struggles he's had over the past two and a half years, he's spoken a lot about how he's sort of rushed back from injuries from niggles quite regularly over the past, uh, yeah, pretty much since 2022. Um, yeah, but given all of those things, I, I sort of felt as though England were almost giving him the opportunity to 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 confirm that he shouldn't be in their future mm -hmm. plans. He's the second oldest player in in the in the team. Uh, it was almost like saying we're obviously going to bring back. Brooke, Duckett, Smith, and give them opportunities in T20 at some point when the timing's right. Here's your chance just for one last time to go and get a couple of pretty 30s and, and not quite do it, and we can move on for good. Instead, it's gone completely the other way. Uh, he's taken, I think, five wickets and six overs. Uh, he got 37 the other night, which was England's top score in a pretty poor run chase. Mm. Uh, and then he really whacked it tonight. It was, you know, it was classic Livingston. The attack wasn't the best that he'll face, um, but... A, you know, it was big leg side dominant stuff. I think he scored probably 80 plus percent of his runs on the leg side, but there was some serious power in there. And, um, you know, for all that um, we sort of roll our eyes at bilateral T20 series, it did. The place was really rocking when there were there were 15,000 Welshies going, uh, um, you know, or, or had a few beers on a Friday night. And it, it, it was properly rocking when Livingston was was monstering stoyness around the place. It felt good. It felt good. I mean, there's a lot, like you say, a lot of why are we playing those series? Well, because it's fun. Because we like cricket, we like playing cricket. Why are we playing? Why is Cote d'Ivoire playing Ghana in a in a football friendly? I don't know. Because they like football, they like watching it. It's a good time. Uh, but we had a good time tonight. When the game is good, it's good to watch. Uh, Livingston, fun. You know, Livingston, this this player that, you know, like I was saying on comms, you, you, there's. I think he's haunted by that ball that he hit over the stand at Headingley like that that is like his ghost of Livingston past that just follows him around and it and everybody's like well why don't you do that every ball we saw you do it that one time why don't you do it every other time and because it's difficult to do so he's been in this position where a huge amount is expected he's batted at six and seven mostly he's in there trying to twat the ball at the end here he's batting at four he's got time to get himself in and lo and behold he turns around to big innings it's only his fifth half century across all formats in 60 odd innings He's played one test and a bunch of ODIs and, and T20s. He's, he's rarely um, got past 50, but often hasn't had the opportunity to do that. So he basically gets him there. Bethel gets out, what, 25 yeah, runs I, short? I, actually, just on that, I think that, that partnership, you could see they were sort of feeding off each other. And I think Livingston, Livingston played with Bethel in the 100. Um, they had a couple of good partnerships together for Birmingham Phoenix. And he sort of spoke about trying to shepherd him and have that 
um, you know, try and show him how to do what Livingston has been charged with not doing himself, of trying to get over the line and trying to play that finisher's role. Um, and it felt like Livingston sort of took charge for the most part. He was trying to take down the seamers. And then Bethel's role was to try and take down the spinners, which is easier said than done when it's Adam Zampa. Um, but he was, yeah, really, really impressed. I mean, those the, the over with four boundaries in, particularly yeah. the, I thought the third of those, he goes four over mid wicket, six over here, up over long on. But then to pick the googly and slap it firm, flat, hard through cover, um, you know, a lot of players would have just tried to go again and Sog swept it straight up in the air. But instead, he he had the presence of mind to um, play that shot. And I think, yeah, you know, that 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 inning sort of showed the it probably showed international cricket why people in England have been talking about Bethel for a long time, even though he's only twenty. It was yeah, it was a, a, a seriously impressive knock. I thought. Is the Birmingham Phoenix like? Is it a bear influenced Phoenix? Is it kind of? <laughs> bear shaped when it comes up out of the fire it's hard to tell the difference between all of the different mascots yeah i think um <laughs> i don't even know where to go with that i think it's one of those that um yeah it comes back it it could eat you alive it could yep. maul you to death it yep. could set you on fire mm -hmm. um in this case maybe it kind of did all of that to england when they completely lost their heads um against some part-time offies in the what uh, 17th and 19th overs they did completely lose their heads. This is where it got funny towards the end. So 25 runs away when Bethel goes, I think I might play a little reverse sweep here against the off spinner. Yorks himself and gets bowled. Fine, that can happen. That can happen. Um, they go back to the well. Travis Head, who's captaining, which we didn't mention, his captaincy debut for Australia tonight in the absence of Marsh, which feels significant, you know, that, well, that's, that's where it's going next. Um, Marsh is only coming into this white ball job and they're about the same age, but who knows? Who knows? Who knows what the Ides of March and all that? The Ides of March, perhaps. Um, beware. Beware. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's why Mitch Marsh got sick. Maybe there's something in his coffee. I don't know. Now, the point is this. The point is that they go back to the well one time. One, maybe one time too often. Livingston, you can tell. Livingston goes, okay, I'm going to hit a six off Matt Short. We need 11 off 12 balls. I'm going to hit a six here. And then it won't be possible to win the to lose the game basically even if i get out which he duly does it's an absolute monster it's over my shoulder here over the camera gantry over the trees legitimately probably into the river i think um as that one went flying away so you know they're pretty much good at that point um but oh and i forgot to mention that sam curran gets out in the previous short over as well so he's taken two in that over he comes on to bowl the 19th um livingston hits the six and then livingston gets out and then Brad who casts the very next ball gets himself out at that point that scores a level so Livingston's got he's, he's taken them to 193 they need one run to win and two wickets fall with scores level they've still got three in hand so they're you know they're always going to scramble the single somewhere but it was it was an extraordinary well, I might come back to one element of that in the Hall of Fame which perhaps we should come to now this is the final word daily England Australia T20 it's brought to you by Westfield London and Westfield Stratford City if you want to live on the edge, well, you can do what I'm doing now, which is record an outdoor podcast in Cardiff at 10.38 uh, p.m. in a short-sleeved summer shirt, which is one way of living on the edge, or go to Gravity Max. That's not what Liam Livingston experienced tonight. That was Gravity Minimum because he was launching them out of the ground here. Go to Gravity Max. Do go-karting. Go to the rock climbing wall. Play video games in the video game pod. They've got a karaoke joint if you want it that's quite death defying at times if you need to sit through somebody's edition of Celine Dion it's all coming back to me now uh, which which contrary to some people's opinion is a great karaoke song people doubt it at the start they doubt it at the start but they're right into it by the end Gravity Max at Westfield what's your karaoke song Matt Roller oh great question um, probably have to be an old school classic wedding disco banger of uh, Robbie Williams Angels very good. Okay, that's a. I'll, I will accept that. We're in. We are in the UK. That is. Um, that is a place where that answer is acceptable. So Hall of Fame. I mean, I was teasing it before, but how many games do you think have been won by the batting side off a hat trick ball? <laughs> I don't know the answer to that, but I want to know the answer to that. Not many. That's what happened tonight. Yeah, and also it. It. I think this was Short's first ever fifer in pro cricket, and I think this was his two hundred and thirty something game. Someone can. Tell us, yep. uh, but it was it was a lot of games for him to not have taken a five foot and then do it, it basically bowling at the death it, at about five degrees mm -hmm. in Cardiff on a Friday night. <laughs> um, Australia have never beaten England in Cardiff. That trend continues. This is the graveyard for Australian hopes and dreams. Anything will jump out at you, Hall of Famey, today? 
well, today, yeah, um, I was sat there in Moose Coffee in Cardiff in the middle of the day, uh, sat inside having some poached eggs, and Mitch Marsh plonks himself down outside with a Diet Coke and has some brunch himself. He does look a bit sniffly, to be fair. Okay. Um, and then suddenly, however, many hours later at the ground, he's ruled out, mm. and, it, you know, is he going to be back in time for Sunday? Am I going to be back in time for Sunday, having picked up Mitch Marsh's second-hand germs? I'm, I'm quite nervous, to be honest, about what state I might be okay. in tomorrow morning. Did, did you two kiss? Uh, no. But, uh, Do you think it's on the cards? Yeah. I don't want early to, days. I don't want to comment in this yeah. kind of public okay. forum, Jeff. <laughs> I mean, early days. We don't want to put any pressure on things. We'll see where they go. Now, it is you can you can see our breath steaming out here. That's how cold it's become at this time of night. I'm going to go anti Hall of Fame, Australian selection, Cooper Connolly, at nine. They batted him at night. Now, what the fuck <laughs> is the point? Of bringing him in. Okay, you've come over here with a squad with young players in it, and the point is to give them an opportunity. Okay? why? And well, they probably should have been playing the first game, these guys. Fraser McGurk left out. Connolly left out. Okay, Bartlett was there. Great. He gets injured, so Hardy comes in. Fine. You're not expecting them all to play all three games, but you want all of them to play probably two out of three of your newish players. Cooper Connolly bats what four five six when he's playing big bash when he's playing for wa that's where he's made runs that's where he's been damaging you put him in at nine and force him to open the bowling he's a part-time spinner like he's a decent he's a he's a he's kind of an all-rounder but the spins are developing thing he gets carted in the two overs that he bowls unsurprisingly there but he's not there to do that that's not his job he's when when australia need a quick run through the middle order cooper connolly should have been out there what is the point? Why are you, what are you going to learn from picking Marcus Stoinis and Tim David again? We know what they can do. Fine, they're very good players. Fine, they will probably play the, the T20 World Cup in 2026. They'll probably still be around. Great. Okay. They don't need to play all of the games here. They also don't need to bat. If you want to put someone at nine, put Stoinis at nine for a game. It doesn't matter. If, if you want to have the long batting lineup, fine. What is the point of picking a young, developing, early 20s player, and then saying, oh, you're down at nine, champ, and he didn't even get a hit. It, it was it was enraging to me. Possibly the best bit of all of it is that Ben Dorcious, uh, I think when Ellis went down, or maybe even when Meredith went down, but let's be honest, Australia are deep in the depth charts here on Quigs. Um, but Dorcious comes over, and I, Dorcious has been in the UK this summer. He's been playing for Durham, he's been playing in the 100. I don't know whether he was on a little European mini break, whether he's cut that short, whether he's had to fly all the way back from Australia, but he was here. I did see him in the warm-ups. Uh, I was left out so that Connolly could share the new ball uh, and not bad at number nine. Didn't, didn't quite add up, did it? It, it, was, it was infuriating, and it will remain infuriating. And uh, last in the Hall of Fame, I've just uh, you can't see him anymore, but the ground stewards at this joint with their matching sky blue shell suit polyester track suits very 90s West Coast hip-hop video clip. What a look. Obviously, the first thing you associate with Wales is uh, pastel blue skies. That's what you think of. That's the kit. It's got the Glamorgan crest. It's got Glamorgan on the back. And they are swaggering around the boundary saying, yeah, if you want to invade this pitch, you are going to get monstered by us. A pile of sky blue hurt is going to land down upon you. Uh, I need one of these tracksuits. Somebody, find a way, please, get one for me. We'll probably need several of them to pile up so we don't freeze to death out here. That's uh, that's enough from us, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Just an honourable mention as well to the incredible crowd catch. Uh, oh, in yeah. the first innings, it was a baldy who sort of leaned over the front and I genuinely thought might have concussed himself, but actually came up with the ball in hand and, yeah, it's absolutely stunner. And that was, was it just after Matthew Short had dropped one, wasn't it? Livingston. I, so Yeah, so Livingston plunks one into the deep it was late in the game England probably would have still won it anyway but short after he'd taken the two wickets in the over before he took the two wickets in his next over put down the catch off Livingston that might have turned the game Australia's way probably should have mentioned that in the wrap but sometimes these things slip but yes it does rub it in a bit when the guy catches one over the fence the very next ball and then throws it back to Matt Short who is fielding it on the fence that is the hall of fame uh, thanks to Westfield London Westfield Stratford City thanks to Matt Roller for joining the show thanks to you for listening to the show it has been the final word daily if you like what we do patreon.com slash the final word we will see you from manchester where the decider is taking place and the forecast is filthy and it is uh, as happens in england australia games when series where an important match is coming up it's gonna get washed out we kind of know it already but we'll be there rain rain or rain we'll see you next time <laughs>